Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Eddie Medina and in today's video I'm going to show you how to do a basic product photo shoot. Right. Hey guys, so uh, just to get started on the setup here, uh, the main subject is the bottle of rum. Uh, the whole goal is to basically shoot a hero shot of the bottle, which is normally done at either level uh, with the camera or the camera slightly below so that you can get that that look of grandeur where uh, the actual subject is bigger than life so that's how you get that uh, hero shot okay so we have a uh, Godox SL60W video light with a 7 uh, I'm sorry a 48 inch parabolic softbox is mounted on a C stand here uh, with a counterweight because it does tend to get a little bit heavy on this side uh, on this side here or as a background I have a collapsible uh, background that is two-sided. Uh, one side is black, the other one is white. So it's, a, it's actually a cool piece of gear to have because you can set up a background and do uh, portrait shots or whatnot and it folds and you can store it away in a, in a bag that, uh, that the unit comes in. Um, here, what I also have is I have uh, I just set up a table with some black core board that's going to be defining um, the foreground of the bottle um, and it basically will blend in with the black background. Uh, towards the back, as you can see here, we have an uh, LED RGB light that I have set up here. I have it set up. Uh, uh, you can actually change the colors of the light uh, to any color that you want. Uh, right now I have it set up so that it uh, it's going when I turn it on it's going to give me the amber color which is going to emphasize uh, the color of the uh, product or the liquid within the uh, within the bottle in addition to that I have set up this translucent card here that is between the light and the bottle itself the reason why I have it here is so that it diffuses the light even more because the light that gets thrown from the actual RGB light is pretty strong so this is a way of diffusing it. Aside from the fact that when I first was setting this up when you look through the camera the LED lights which are tiny squares on the actual unit they're very distinct and, and if I shoot it without this diffusion card I can actually see the uh, the the tiny okay so in addition to the RGB light what I did is I also placed this uh, small uh, translucent uh, square here uh, the reason for it is because when I was looking at the bottle through the lens I was noticing that each individual LED bulb on the light uh, was very predominant and so I didn't want that. I wanted the light to be nice and soft and even um, so that it would um, uh, spread throughout the bottle. So that's the reason why I have that there. Uh, the only thing is that I'm going to do it that once I start taking the photos, I'm going to have to move the material from one, from one uh, side to the other due to the fact that it's, it's smaller than the surface of the bottle. So therefore, in order for me to make each side even and with no dark spots, I'm going to have to move it um, so that it takes care of that issue. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to be doing is um, I'm going to be shutting down that light that is uh, basically lighting me right now um, because I don't want that hot spot from that particular light to influence um, on the bottle itself. Then I'm going to take this um, pretty inexpensive LED light and I'm going to be positioning it in such a way that I'm, I'm highlighting the certain uh, raised uh, embossed areas of the bottle. For example, it has a sugar cane on this side. I want those details to actually show. And I'm basically going to go, I'm going to be shooting uh, multiple photos because I'm going to build this, uh, the, final, uh, the final shot. So I'm going to be taking a photo uh, where I'm lighting the, um, the label itself. I'm going to be lighting the sides. So I'm going to take multiple photos that way 
Um, and what I'm going to do in post in Photoshop is I'm going to be putting all those um, photos together for the final result. Okay guys, so I'm going to get started in taking the photos. Um, just uh, one thing as a reminder, or actually a couple of things as a reminder is make sure that the bottle and any other surfaces to clean any debris, uh, make sure that the bottle doesn't have any smudges or fingerprints or whatnot. Uh, you can use like a microfiber cloth just to wipe that. I know it's, you know, um, common sense, but unfortunately nowadays common sense is not really common and it's actually a luxury. And so therefore, uh, make sure that the surfaces are clean as much as possible. I know that you can, you know, clean up or, uh, you know, in, in Photoshop and post, but the less you have to do when it comes to that, the better. Okay. So you want to make sure, obviously, you're also on a tripod. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is um, I'm going to use this remote to um, trigger the shutter. Uh, so that way I don't have to be in this spot, uh, kind of, you know, pressing the button and at the same time trying to like reach over to, uh, to light uh, the subject with this light here. You know, I could just freely move, press the button, and I know that it's not going anywhere. Now, in my case, right now I'm using the Sigma 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 lens. I'm actually at 2.8 so that the background is nice and blurry. Uh, obviously, I'm focused on the uh, the label itself, so that's it. That's in focus is not going to move it from there because I have it in manual uh, focus. Okay, you don't want to when you do something like this, you don't want to be in auto focus because if if for whatever reason I, I move into the shot um, or I, you know whatever it is that you do is going to throw off the the focus, and so you don't want that. So in manual, you just focus it exactly where you want it, which is always. Uh, obviously at the front of the bottle, making sure that the label itself, the brand name, is nice and, uh, and sharp. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and, and begin by uh, turning on the LED light. So you can see it's shining uh, amber plus amber on the translucent piece. It's just going to give us this very rich color, very rich honey color that we want from the bottle itself okay so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to go ahead and take the first shot just because i want to have a day shot okay so that's done now i'm going to start going around the bottle and i'm going to shine the light now it doesn't matter if this shows a little bit uh, in the background uh, I'm sorry, in front of the camera, because at the end, I'm going to take the bottle off and I'm just going to shoot the background with nothing in it so that I can have a uh, base layer uh, that I can always manipulate in post. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, kind of like light the, the foreground to one side. Okay, making sure that I'm not making any really uh, ugly hot spots. I just want to make sure that it's nicely lit. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to come here to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm looking for hot spots. I want to make sure that the label is nicely lit, but at the same time, I don't want it to look too harsh. Uh, you want it to, uh, you want to make sure that it's uh, the fall off or the, or the highlight is nice and even and that you're not creating really, uh, really harsh uh, um, hot spots on it. Okay, now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make sure that the label is nice and lit. So right there I can see that um, the label is very distinct. Okay, now I'm going to come here on this side, just kind of bring that over, make sure that this side is taken care of, and I'm going to come over to this side and do the same thing. 
Okay. As I mentioned earlier, um, that diffuse, um, the diffusion, the piece of diffusion that I have here, it's only covering a certain amount of the bottle because it, it's actually smaller than, than the bottle itself. So therefore, uh, when I'm looking at the, at the photo here, I can tell that it's nice and, and lit and evenly lit in the center, but there's these dark areas on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over just a tad bit. Okay, so now that evens the light on one side, I'm going to take a photo right there. Then I'm going to move it over to the other side to cover the uh, that portion that it's in darkness or in shade or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to take a photo of that and I'm just going to bring it back. Okay, another thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the light back again. And I'm going to shine the light towards the the top or the cap or the bottom and make sure that that the cap is nicely lit and you can see some of the details on the cap itself. And I'm going to bring it over to this side so that it creates a, a contrast where it brings out the cap from the, it separates it from the background. And so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm, I'm just checking it on the, the back of the camera here. And just to put a little bit more accent on the top of it, I'm going to light it up here and make sure that I separate it from the back. Okay, I'm just going to take one more here. And I think we'll be done. Awesome. Okay, guys, well, um, so I've taken all the photos. I have made sure that the different angles of the bottle are nicely lit. Now, obviously, this is the way that I approach this particular, uh, this particular shoot. Now, there's many different ways. It doesn't mean this is the only way that it can be done or this is the only equipment that you can use. It, this can be approached from many different ways. So I'm not saying that I'm right. Uh, on everything, you can uh, experiment on your own with whatever it is that you have. This is just what I've used with this particular shoot. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna go into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how I put the final image together. Hey guys, welcome back. So now that I have finished the product photo shoot, I'm going to begin the editing process. Now, the way that I'm gonna to speak to you is with the assumption that you are somewhat familiar with Photoshop and or uh, Lightroom. Now the reason why I'm bringing Lightroom into the conversation is because uh, since I normally shoot raw photos, I tend to uh, do any, some minor adjustments in Lightroom, then I export those photos uh, into a JPEG format into Photoshop to continue um, doing whatever photo manipulation I need to do. Uh, if you're not familiar with RAW uh, or JPEG and the differences between those two, um, it would be similar to you either reading uh, the full book or reading Cliff Notes. Uh, and if you guys do not understand my reference to Cliff Notes, then I just aged myself. And you can always Google it to find out what is it that I am talking about. Okay, guys, before I begin, I just want to apologize for uh, some background noise that you may hear every now and then as I speak to you. Um, I have double pane windows, I have double pane doors, but still the traffic uh, noise. Uh, still uh, seeps through and you may hear it in the background so uh, I'm sorry for that okay guys so I'm gonna start with the editing process and I'm gonna begin obviously with the very first layer starting from the bottom and obviously working our way up this layer here is my base layer and this is how the photo um, came out just with um, the with the overhead light that you saw on the photo shoot video 
So you got the overhead light and I, I also had a supplemental LED light that I was hand holding uh, where I wanted to uh, have these highlights on the embossed uh, sugar cane here on the bottle. So this was my very first shot that I took and of course I named it emboss highlight which is referring to this part of the bottle here. So the next step was to um, add the second layer which is this one here and I'm gonna turn it on and make it visible by clicking on the uh, this little square and an eyeball comes up which means that now the layer is visible and I have labeled this one label glass highlight so what this particular layer is doing is is bringing out uh, with more clarity the front of the label and also some highlight areas here on the bottle uh, due to the contour that this particular bottle has so let me turn it on and off so you can see see by turning it on and off you can see how it's just bringing the shape of the bottle okay so the next step uh, is the neck middle lit which means once I turn this on if you see the front of the bottle here in this neck area when you turn it on and off it just gives that extra highlight uh, that accentuates this part of the neck label okay so the next step is the neck top lit left which once you turn it on as you can see it creates this nice highlight on the side of the bottle here now this is the light that I was using uh, just to create the various contours of the bottle or to highlight the contours and so uh, later in the other um, layer I'm going to show you how I remove these lights but as of right now is giving some highlight uh, at the top uh, showing some of the details of the bottle top and the side uh, the next layer which is the fifth layer here is the neck top lit right so when I make that visible as you can see I went over lit the other side and it's bringing uh, this side of the neck and the top of the bottle uh, it's lighting it up you there's a distinct um, contrast between the top the side uh, and it's bringing it out so it's it does not blend into the the background here the, the black background the next layer is the sixth layer is the amber lit right so I'm gonna turn it on really quick to see what's what that's doing okay and just to explain to you what's going on as of right now when I was doing the shoot I placed a light on the very back of the bottle itself and it was an LED light now the LED light um, when you were looking at it through my lens through the camera lens you can distinctly see the little squares just kind of like this but uh, what you see here on these lights you see the the round lights well this particular light had little squares that you can see it glow and so they were very distinct and I didn't want to uh, I didn't want that to show so I had um, or I have a small square plastic translucent uh, piece that I put in between the light and the bottle so that it would diffuse the light even more soften it up but at the same time it prevented from those distinct light uh, light bulbs to show through the bottle because I didn't want that uh, the only thing was that this particular uh, square it was uh, it wasn't big enough to actually cover the entire um, the entire surface or the entire area in the back of the bottle so I had to do it in stages 
So that's what that's what I did here with this particular um, layer. So when I turn it on, basically what I did is I took that little plastic piece and I just moved it over just a tad bit so it would cover this side of the bottle and it will get rid of that that dark spot on the side. The next layer, the seventh layer is the amber lit left. So basically I'm doing the same thing with the other side which is this side here that appears to be in the dark. I move the um, the diffusion, the small diffusion panel and I moved it over and so now it takes care of that dark spot on this side and it just makes everything look a lot even. Okay guys so the next step is the eighth layer here and I have named it uh, combined. Uh, the reason why I named it that way is because I am technically combining all these layers together in making one layer here. Now the way that you combine all the layers is by pressing command option shift E on a Mac or control option shift E on a PC. Now uh, so when I make it visible uh, you see that it brings everything together uh, all the highlights but it still has obviously the the lights on the side. Now the reason why I I did that is because the next step is for me to remove these lights. Now I just did it this way because that's just the way I did it. Now it doesn't mean that this is the end all be all or I'm right and you're wrong or this is the only way to do it. There's many ways uh, to achieve the desired result with Photoshop. This is just the way I did it. Technically if I wanted to have removed these lights, I could have easily gone to the layer where it appears, uh, which is this one and, and this one here, uh, and just basically uh, get rid of them in the particular layer. But I just wanted to focus on what exactly is it that I did uh, on these particular layers when it came to the bottles. So I didn't want to do too much in one layer just for the sake of, of showing you what I'm doing step by step. Okay, so I could have easily removed them there. I didn't. I decided to do it here. It makes no difference. Okay, so now I'm going to show you real quick what I did. So once I combined the layer, I went ahead and duplicated the layer by hitting Command J. So now that I have duplicated the layer, I'm going to show you how is it that I got rid of the lights. So I come to the tool menu here and I selected the patch tool. With the patch tool, uh, I go ahead and make a selection starting from the outside, bringing it down and around and up until it connects. Once the selection connects, it turns into these little marching ants. That's what we uh, know them for. And then you click inside the selection and you're going to bring it over to what you want to patch it with, which is going to be uh, the dark area of the background. I'm going to go ahead and let go of the mouse. And the selection has been done. As you can see, the light is gone. Now to stop the little marching ants from continuing, uh, then you uh, deselect by pressing Command D and that deselects that area. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and come to this side and do the exact same thing. I'm going to go ahead and start from the outside. I'm going to click, draw the line here, bring it over and connect it. Okay, so the marching ants appear again. I'm going to click inside the selection and I'm going to do the same thing and bring it over to what I want to patch it with. Okay, and once again, it gets rid of the uh, the light. And once again, you deselect by pressing Command D. And there you go. Lights are gone. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, this uh, layer, 
I'm going to go ahead and delete it because I don't need it. I had done it previously. I just want to show you how I went ahead and did it. I actually did it with the light removal layer, which is here. I'm going to go ahead and make it visible. And as you can see, they're gone. Now, the next step that I wanted to do is to remove this spot here. If you can see this, uh, this looks very distracting. It doesn't look very nice. And so I wanted to get rid of this spot and also this little circular spot here that was created by the light above. Okay, so it's basically reflecting um, the light above here. So I wanted to make this even. Uh, in order to, to do that, um, I came to, I have this particular layer here which is the front spot removal. And when I click it on, uh, as you can see, it's gone. Now, just to show you real quick, what is it that I did? Um, let me go ahead and hide that layer again. And basically I, I come down to this layer. And what I did is I used the clone stamp tool, which is uh, this tool here. And what this does, it, this tool basically uh, it clones different areas and the way that it's cloned is you press option and it turns into this little target here so when you click on that target it basically selects this area so that you can clone it that's why it's called the clone stamp tool it clones it uh, in, in it when you actually click on it it's cloning it's uh, taking from here and it's uh, cloning it so that you can get rid of all the of the spots here same thing with this area you uh, take an area from here you click it you clone that area and then you bring it in and it begins to uh, uh, make it similar now you want to be uh, when it comes to products like this if you're doing it for a, for a company you're doing it professionally what you want to do is uh, you want to take your time in cloning, uh, do um, pieces at a time, do it little by little, take your time. Because if you want to do um, do it in one fell swoop, sometimes uh, it, it creates smudges. It just doesn't look right. So you want to take your time and do it little by little so that you can have uh, the results that you have in this area. So what I have done here uh, on the on the uh, front spot removal layer is it does exactly what I did I took my time and this is the result as you can see let me turn it on and off again you see this ugly area here and also the spot I'm gonna turn it on and as you can see it looks a lot better now okay guys so the next step after removing the spots from the front of the bottle was for me to create a copy of that particular layer. Uh, the reason for the copy is so that I can do other creative manipulations if I want to without affecting any of the other layers below. Because it's always good practice to make um, uh, changes, adjustments, or whatever it is that you need to do uh, on separate layers. I mean, it, it is your prerogative. You can do whatever you want. You can technically uh, grab a photo and try to do everything in in just one layer uh, to an extent you can um, you can do that but obviously it's not recommended you want to you know you want to do your uh, whatever corrections adjustments whatever it is that you need to do do them separately because it makes your workflow a lot easier in the long run now the reason why I made that copy is because I wanted to also cut out the bottle from the background. So what I ended up doing is now that I have a separate copy here where I have all the layers, um, I combined all the layers below, made a separate copy. Then I made another copy of that copy and I went ahead and created this layer here so for now I'm gonna skip these two and I'll, I'll explain why 
uh, but I went ahead and this was the the next layer after that copy that I made and so this particular copy I renamed it cutout cutout because obviously I wanted to cut out the the bottle from the background as you can see uh, the cutout what I did is I used the pen tool which is a tool that is used to to basically make uh, selection the selection of the bottle this is the most accurate way of doing it where you're technically creating um, you're creating a path that you're later going to use to um, select the bottle on its own and remove the rest of the uh, the rest of the image okay I'm not gonna go through it right now uh, but the, like I said this is definitely a tool that you want to be able to be very proficient with uh, and just to show you what it looks like I'm gonna turn all these layers off so as you can see the bottle it's on its own and because I went ahead and got rid of the rest of it and this little checkered pattern means that it's an invisible layer so there's nothing here the only thing that appears is the bottle on its own okay so Having said that, let me go ahead and turn all these layers back on again. And now that I have uh, done the cutout, the next thing that I wanted to do was to create um, more of an enhanced area here where the light is shining through uh, the bottle and it kind of just makes this front area of the bottle just stand out just a little bit more and I'm gonna add a, a layer here on the top I'm gonna go ahead and bring uh, come and select this tool here and I need to get the rectangle tool now the rectangle um, I'm going to go ahead and place the rectangle in front of the bottle like so this lets you draw a rectangle square whatever you want and I want it to be around there and then I'm gonna let go as you can see the color is white because the foreground color for it uh, is white here now the way to change that color is you can double click on the rectangle and what that does it opens up with this color picker and so you can always go ahead and you can choose different colors as you can see it's filling it with whatever you want you can come here to the blues and you can choose whatever you want and it'll turn it to that color uh, but one thing that it's um, very handy is that when you bring the cursor out or you bring the arrow uh, and you you come on up to the image it turns it into this little uh, color picker tool here so you can go ahead and you can actually select the color from the image itself if you want to try to match it as close as possible then you can just click on here and it turns it into that particular color I'm gonna go ahead and press OK but obviously it's a solid box that's not what I want I want to create uh, I want to mimic uh, that light shining through and just making it a little bit more intense here in front of the bottle so the next step would be to go to the filter and choose the blur tool and on blur I'm gonna go ahead and choose what it's called the Gaussian blur I'm gonna click on that uh, and so you you will probably get this um, this notification here letting you know that uh, this particular layer uh, it's a smart object and the way that you know that it's a smart object is because it has uh, this small square here and so it tells you that you would need to rasterize first so I'm gonna go ahead and click rasterize and right away you could see that this is the radius of the blur so now you could see that with this adjustment tool here uh, it lets you 
it lets you choose the intensity of the blur okay so the more you put the more the blur just spreads and as you can see uh, that looks just about as good as it could be uh, let's say that another way of doing it is let's say you brought it down just a tad bit a tad bit less and it looks more like this then you can go ahead and press OK but if it's still too intense and you want some of this um, uh, the foreground uh, texture to actually you're able to see it um, you want it to be a little bit more subtle you can always come here to the opacity and you can bring down the opacity and as you can see it'll um, the intensity will be reduced and you'll be able to still see uh, the uh, the shine or the color that you want but at the same time you still be able to see the texture uh, of the foreground and if you bring it down just a little bit more I think will work for me it looks just right uh, in that particular setting right there so bringing it down to about 25 26 percent and that looks great okay so that's how I I um, I added uh, a highlight area here in front of the bottle okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trash that layer because I had already done it here and so I'm gonna click this and turn it on and as you can see um, same result and in this case I just want it just a little bit more of a pop but just subtly though not too much the next layer uh, consists of this light ray so technically what I did is I uh, did uh, a step similar to uh, the one I did here with with this light I did the similar um, process with this top one here and so once I make it visible you'll see that the light now is giving a little bit more separation of the top and the neck of the bottle now in reality because I did the cutout first this layer would would have been here but as you can see because of the other layers uh, it doesn't really make an impact on the rectangle since it's it's it was done in this area but it definitely does make an impact on the the ray uh, layer here because now this particular light and I'm, I'm using it kind of like a spotlight uh, it's actually coming towards the front of the bottle which is not what I want to do so therefore I need to drag this layer beneath the cutout so that way now the spotlight is coming from the back and I don't have haze here in front of the bottle so it just gives it more of that um, uh, that hero shot look uh, that we all like okay and just to finish off the next layer what I did is I added a hue saturation layer uh, to this uh, and once I turn the layer on uh, I don't know if you could see it on your end but it's just a really subtle um, addition of saturation uh, for the amber color within the bottle and um, it just makes it pop just a little bit more and the final layer would be this here where I went ahead and once again I did command option shift and E or on a PC it would be control option shift E and I brought all the layers together and basically that is the final result okay guys well thank you for being here I hope this uh, information was uh, useful to you uh, once again, this is just the approach I took with this particular product shot. Um, there's many ways to get to the same final result. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. And till next time, 
Have a good one. Hey guys, I hope that you found this video useful. Um, and I'm glad that I was able to share one of the basic ways to approach uh, product photography. Uh, if you found this video to be entertaining or at the very least informative, then I ask you to please uh, like, subscribe, uh, ring the notification bell so that you could get uh, uh, notified of future uh, videos that I put out. In the meantime, thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one.